Hey, what's up YouTubers? And welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys things that I picked up over the last couple weeks. The gang is all here and we are in chill mode. You can see Miss Heidi on the top. She was kind of peeking at us. I think she's spying on us. The other one, she's knocked out cold. So anyway, let's see. I'll show you guys what I picked up over the last couple weeks. I, I do have more stuff coming in and this is probably going to be a decent size video as far as length. So I figured I might as well record a video now and get some of this put away and I have more stuff coming in. Um, namely, I have a pretty decent size uh, vinegar syndrome order that's coming in. I think it's like maybe four or five titles. That's not really that decent, but it's all titles that are running low on slip covers and I will share that with you once it comes in. But this stuff right here is Vinegar Syndrome. I got a couple titles from Olive. Picked up a couple things at FYE. I got a couple of figures in the back. Got some vinyl. I have some Code Red re-releases. This little stack right here are movies that I recently picked up that I also watched. So I can talk a little bit about those. And that stack right there is Disney. And I'm also gonna do a comparison video for a Mego figure and I'm gonna compare it with a NECA figure. So stay tuned for that. We'll do that at the end as well. Uh, first, we will get into the Code Red re-releases, and I'm not exactly sure why they're doing it. I do have a theory, but this is only my theory, and I don't know for sure. But many of you may know that the owner of Code Red is Bill Olson, and his brother, owns Scorpion releasing. His name is Walt Olson. And Bill Olson has been ill for some time. He's, I'm not gonna get into any of his personal details. That's his own business. <clears throat> but I do believe that Walt Olson is maybe helping out on the Code Red label and he's releasing some stuff. So the first title here is kind of a monster movie, kind of a transformation scene movie. This is the original Code Red release called Panic, and this is one that I had in my collection already for a couple years. This came out in 2017, I believe. <clears throat> and so this was the original release, like I was saying, and this is spine number 158 for those of you at home that keep track of that stuff. This is the re-release, and I actually picked this up on Amazon, and they are releasing or they're re-releasing some of the titles and they're selling them they have a barcode on the back now for retail stores and for retailers online and the original one was only available you know from the code red site or i think you could actually get this one from ronin flicks too at one time but as far as i know and from what i can tell there is nothing different between the two releases as far as the transfer because they both have the 2016 HD scan with color correction. And I think they have the same bonus features, which for this one, I believe there were no bonus features anyway. And the only difference is that it has a different cover and that the new one has the barcode. So that is Panic. And this was a pretty decent, pretty fun watch. That's the first one from Code Red. There are some more on the on Amazon that you can pick up. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep double dipping on these, but I wanted to get this one. Yeah, this is actually a pretty decent movie. This one's called The Slasher is the Sex Maniac, and this was the original release right here. And this one was spine number 131. And this is the re-release. This was actually the original title called So Sweet, So Dead. It is an Italian giallo film it does have English dialogue. I just like this title a little bit better, actually a lot better. The Slasher is the Sex Maniac that just kind of pulls you in and slaps you across the face and says, hey, watch this movie. But it's the exact same movie, just different titles. And again, it's everything on the back is the same. So the only difference is it has a, the alternate title and a barcode. This is a fun watch. I enjoyed it. A uh, little bit of info, like a little bit of trivia for you guys on this one. And I haven't seen the, the cut of this one, um, but there is a, this is the R-rated version of the film. 
there is an unrated cut that has scenes of full penetration um, added into the movie and that was done by porno actors not any of the actors in this film but it was made to look like it was actual actors from this movie but it's not on this edition I just watched this the other night and I didn't see it on there so but there is a version of the movie out there that does have penetration so I thought you guys would be interested in that I did pick up this is an upgrade for me I do have this on DVD and this is the Warner Brother Archives Hanna-Barbera Thundar the Barbarian this is the complete series on Blu-ray and this cartoon may be responsible for movies like Conan the Barbarian because this came out in 1981 Conan the Barbarian came out in 82 and then there was a little series about that there was a couple Conan movies uh, Heat Man came out in 1983-84 so this predated that so this, this may be responsible for shows like that this is a very fun show I grew up watching this it's my favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoon I believe yeah it's right up there with like Scooby-Doo and some of those others this was right up at the top definitely wanted to upgrade that to blu-ray and I do have the DVD still as well so let's get into the little stack here of movies I recently watched and I'll talk a little bit about each of these and not give any spoiler alerts so I went to go get a glass of water and I, what I meant to say is I'm not going to give any spoilers about these movies I'm just going to briefly talk about them and let you know if how I like them and if I would recommend them to you guys uh, the first one is the newest release from Sub Rosa Studios, and this is called Camp Murder. And this is a film by Mark Polonia of the Polonia Brothers fame. And Mark and his twin brother John started making shot on video movies a long time ago. He has a pretty decent um, resume under his belt of a lot of uh, low budget shot on video horror films. Um, John Polonia died, I believe, in 2008, but Mark Polonia still makes movies, and he actually had a cameo role in the beginning of this one. And this is a, this is your classic tale of a mental patient who escaped this guy here. He was, um, his name was Tommy in the movie, and he was a killer. He was a serial killer and they put him away in a mental institution and 20 years later he escapes he murders some of the orderlies and he escapes and of course he goes back to the camp where it all started and at this camp now in current time there are a group of couples who are on a retreat for a little getaway time they have a, a bag of drugs and they have tents so they have sex and drugs and all that good stuff and Tommy picks them off one by one in very gruesome ways and you have to keep in mind that this is a very low budget film and this movie was uh, released in 2021 so uh, it's pretty new but it has that kind of throwback feel to it. it almost feels like it was made in the 80s and I think that's the kind of charm that some of these shot on video movies have um, there were some good kills there was some pretty good gore, the acting. Some of the actors could hold their own, some of them were dreadful. But I, I enjoyed this movie, and I would recommend it. It's, it's at least worth a watch. Um, that cover is pretty awesome. And they also threw in a 11 by 17 poster of that same image, which uh, I'll pull that out right now and show you guys. So this is what I keep my 11 by 17 posters and I have a couple different sizes of these. This is a portfolio and I have quite a few posters in here. I'm not going to go through all of those just yet. If you guys are ever interested in me doing a video on my posters, let me know. But there is the Camp Murder poster. So I thought that was pretty cool. This is a really nice way to if you don't have room like I have posters all over the place in my house I don't have room to put every single poster I own up so this is a nice little way to keep it protected and you can still you know you could still look at it and 
you know, stuff like that. So you don't have to keep it rolled up and get dusty in your closet or whatever. You can actually have a nice little place to keep it. So let's get into the next title here. The next one here was a little bit disappointing to me. This is the remake of Castle Freak. It was a movie that Stuart Gordon had made, I think in the mid nineties, I'm not sure, 95, 96. And that one was actually pretty decent. This one was put out by Fangoria. And it was also from the producers of Bone Tomahawk, like it says at the top. And this was a cheap buy. I picked this up on Amazon. Uh, you never really know for sure if you're going to get a slipcover if you buy from Amazon. I got lucky and got it. But this is not a very good movie, in my opinion. I had to kind of force my way through it. It was very long, too. That's the good thing about movies like this. I'm going to pull this one back out. This one had a running time of 73 minutes, which was a perfect, perfect length for a movie like that. That's an hour and 13 minutes. This movie here was an hour and six minutes. So it was quite long and it really, it there were certain spots in the movie where it was just brutal. It was a very slow burn in some spots. You know, they had a lot of character development. Um, they had a little bit too much character development and a little bit too much of the history of the castle that didn't really have anything to do with the movie. Um, but I will say a couple good things about it. The monster looked really cool. The, the castle and the atmosphere was really creepy where they kept the castle or the, uh, the freak chained up in the kind of dungeon area. That whole lower area of the castle was just creepy. Um, you can hear flies buzzing. You can see just, you know, blood and guts and gore. And um, it gave you a really dirty feeling like you needed to have a shower after watching this movie. But the story fell flat it, for me. The characters were a little bit annoying. And some of the characters, I did not mind watching them die. I mean, you know, sometimes when you watch a movie like this and you kind of start pulling for some of the characters and you hope they escape, a lot of the characters in this movie I could care less about. So I didn't care if the, the freak caught them and killed them. But that's just my take. I would give this a 5 out of 10. This is probably a one-time watch for me. I may never watch this again. Now this movie, on the other hand, this is the 4K Ultra HD edition of It Chapter 2. I was a little bit late to this one. I saw part one a while ago, like over a year ago, and I really loved that movie. I thought it was great. I, for some reason, I dragged my feet on getting this one, but I watched it and I thought it was spectacular. And this was a very long movie. I think this was almost three hours long and it was very, very well done. I thought it was great. I give this one an eight out of 10. This edition I picked up at FYE. I think this was an FYE exclusive. It comes with, the, it's a three disc. You get the 4K, you get the regular Blu-ray, and then there's a bonus disc, and it has the IT documentary on the third Blu-ray disc. It also did come with a digital code, but I took that out. But there is the bonus features with the documentary. And it's a feature length documentary too. I think it's like an hour and a half long. Here's the 4K, which I watched on 4K. It looks spectacular. And there's the Blu-ray. I thought everything about this movie was spectacular. It was really, really good. In my opinion, the movies are better than the original series by far. Um, it's scarier. The special effects are way better. It did have a lot of CGI in it, but it, the CGI was done very well. Um, a lot of very spooky and eerie scenes in this movie. I, without giving anything away, because I'm sure there may be a couple people out there who haven't seen this. Maybe most of you have. Maybe a couple haven't. But the scene where the, uh, what was her name? She goes back to visit the uh, where her dad lived. That was one of the things about this movie, though, that was um, trying to keep track of everybody's name. I have a hard time with names. But the redhead, the female, the only female in the, in the Losers gang, she went back to visit her dad's apartment and she found out that her dad had passed away. And this was 20 years after the original movie. Um, and 
so they're grown up now. And an old lady answers the door and she invites her in for tea and she lets her look around to see if she can bring back memories of her childhood, which uh, she had a very poor, a very bad childhood. And I don't know why she would want to go back there in the first place because her dad was abusive to her. But of course the, the old lady is possessed by Pennywise and there's a scene where she goes in this back room and it's dark and you can hear these feet slapping her bare feet were slapping on the wooden floor in this giant kind of a golem type old woman granny who's probably now 10 feet tall and just monstrous comes running and screaming and I thought that scene was so awesome I rewound it and watched that like three times I thought that, that was spectacular but I was so glad to finally get this um, to complete the uh, It chapter one and two now. So definitely recommend this. And I think these are great. I would definitely watch this several times. So moving right along on, this was another Amazon buy. This is a movie I never heard of before. Uh, this is another slasher film and this is from the eighties. It's from 1986 movie I had never seen before I haven't even heard of this before a cool thing about Amazon is if you buy movies like this they will actually recommend movies to you at the bottom and you can scroll through and I came across this one and I was like I never heard of this one before the cover looked pretty cool I did a little reading about it in the description on Amazon and then I actually went to IMDB and I was, I was like yeah this sounds pretty good it sounds like something I'd be interested in and I watched it, it was, it's another slasher movie and uh I'm glad I watched it, but it was not that great. And this was a John Russo, who was the original director for Night of the Living Dead with uh, George A. Romero. They worked together on that. I believe the script was written by Russo and the film was directed by Romero. Uh, and the guy who was the first zombie in the original Night of the Living Dead was the director of this film. His name is, it's, I just had it on the tip of my tongue, Bill Heinzman. He was the first, he was the graveyard ghoul in the first one. And so he directed it and John Russo did these, he wrote the screenplay for this. Um, so I thought it was gonna be a home run and it was not, it was like a double, you know. I mean, it was not bad, but it was not great either. There was, there's some special features on there if you wanna pause it and check that out. The movie was a little bit unique, though, in that it starts out as a slasher. It starts out really good. It almost has kind of that a prowler, the movie Prowler. It has that same type of vibe. And then about like two-thirds of the way through this movie, it turns into uh, like a Rambo-type movie where it's like explosions and machine guns and uh, hard, very, very hard to explain. It's, it's a unique movie. I don't remember seeing anything like this before. So for like two thirds of this movie, it's a slasher film. And one third of the movie, it's an action adventure movie. So, but I think it is definitely worth a watch. And maybe I piqued your interest on that and you guys will check this out. It's very cheap. It's very affordable on Amazon. I think it was around the $20 mark, give or take a buck or two. Moving right along and a movie that really let me down and disappointed me is Wrong Turn. This is the Wrong Turn remake. Another movie I picked up on Amazon. I got lucky and got the slipcover. Oh boy, where do I start with this one? I had a rant. I was gonna rant about this movie on here, but there's a, there's a couple of topics that I was gonna um, bring to light here. I think I would offend some of you guys out there. So I'm not gonna rant about this movie. I'm just gonna simply say that there was a definite agenda about this movie. You know, there's... Um, I don't even know how far I want to get into this. First of all, I, it should not be a wrong turn movie, in my opinion. It, it was this this movie embarrasses the franchise for me. Um, it doesn't deal with backwoods cannibals in this movie. It's more like a an isolated Viking tribe that <laughs> lives in the mountains. I'm not going to talk too much about this movie. I just want to simply say that I was very disappointed. And this is another movie where on my DVD, my Blu-ray controller remote, on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a button. You push the button, it'll tell you how much time is left in the movie. I must have pushed that thing like 10 times. Like, when is this thing going to end? 
that's how bad it was for me. It was really, really bad. Um, the sad thing is they're making a Wrong Turn remake part two right now. They're already making it as we speak. Um, you guys let me know how you feel about this. Maybe we can discuss it in the, in the uh, comments section because I don't want to say too much and offend some people out there. That's the thing about society today. You, you know, half of the people will agree with you. The other half will get offended. I don't want to offend anybody out there. But there was definitely an agenda to this movie. And maybe some of you guys noticed that too. But I'm just going to move on. We'll talk about something else. Okay, so I picked up a couple of steelbooks from FYE. And this was one that I picked up recently. Uh, actually, this was a... There was a gift from a fellow friend of mine here on YouTube... Um, Lee, he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but uh, he watches videos and we do trade packages from time to time. And he sent me the UK edition of this movie with the nice beautiful slipcover and I really love it. I think it's great. But I also wanted to get the steelbook for this one. And this is called Batman Ninja and this is the Blu-ray DVD digital copy steelbook and it looks fantastic. And I got this at FYE, I think it was only 10 bucks, so I had to grab it. Gonna keep it sealed because, like I said, Lee sent me the Blu-ray from the UK, and that's the one I watched. I just bought this one as a collector's piece, and it's a beauty. Don't have any much else to say about it, so we're gonna move on to the next FYE steelbook. This is another one I got for 10 bucks. This is an FYE exclusive. And this is the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I know a lot of people hate it, but for 10 bucks, an FYE exclusive, I'm gonna grab it, and I did. Uh, this was a remake from 2010 already. I can't believe it's 11 years old. It doesn't seem, that's how fast time is going. I still had fun with this movie. I knew going into this that it was never gonna be comparable to the 1984 original. So I wasn't too disappointed. I actually had fun with it. So these are the two steel books I picked up from FYE, 10 bucks each. Also at FYE, I picked up the Scream Factory edition of Exorcist 2, The Heretic. This one is out of print now, and I think on eBay it's going for about 50, 60 bucks with the slipcover. I got this at FYE for $22, brand new and sealed with the slipcover. just recently watched the director's cut of The Exorcist Part 1, which I think it's about 22 minutes longer than the theatrical cut, the first one. And it was really good. I, I enjoyed it. It just went into more depth about um, when they picked up that little statue in the desert. I forget what that statue's called. I guess it doesn't really matter for this video, but yeah, the the uh, director's cut for Exorcist Part 1 was really good. I'm glad to have Exorcist 2, The Heretic, and I'm glad I was able to get it for a third of the price it's going for now, and I still got it brand new, so that's great. Picked up a couple of Olive Films titles from on, uh, Amazon, and this one's actually in my player right now. I was watching this one. It's called Victims. Um, this movie was, it's a slasher film. It was recorded, it was uh, filmed in 1981. And I think it wasn't released until 86. And there's a little yellow box at the top. And it says, I'll read it to you guys. Victims is presented using the best available elements provided by slasher video not sourced from an HD master, remastered from beta, SP, and unconverted Blu-ray and DVD specifications. The picture quality and the audio quality are terrible on this movie. I still enjoy it though. You know what it kind of looks like to me? <clears throat> if you remember the drive-in days when you're sitting there in your car looking up at the drive-in screen and the screen almost looks faded the picture looks faded because it's on a big screen and it's stretched out. That's exactly what this looks like. It looks like you're wa looking at, look, watching the movie on a washed out 
uh, drive-in screen. That's what it looks like to me, and the, the audio quality is really bad. But it's still worth it to watch a film like this. I don't know if this will ever be released on HD. I'm not sure if anybody even has the elements to, to uh, scrub it up and clean it up. But yeah, this is, uh, like I said, it's in my player right now. Uh, it's not a great movie, but it was still a fun slasher. There's a lot of blood in this movie. And it's about uh, another kind of a unique thing about this movie is there's, there's two killers in this movie instead of one. There's two serial killers on the loose instead of one, and they're picking off women one by one. And there's a group of four women who are going through. It almost kind of has a, a feel like um, the hills have eyes. That's what it felt like to me because these four women were traveling together in a vehicle and they were supposed to be going out to the desert to study rocks and rock formations and stuff like that. And while they're going through the desert, they come across this little gas station and there's some creepy guys at the gas station that gives them, you know, the, the willies and they end up leaving. And then they end up getting, you know, stalked by these uh, kind of hillbillies, I guess. And there's uh, two serial killers on the loose. So um, I probably made this movie sound better than it actually is by giving you guys that little description. But uh, it's still worth a watch. I would check it out. And you could probably get this on... Amazon. I think I paid 15 bucks for this. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty good movie. Pretty good deal for that kind of a movie. Uh, here is the second Olive movie from Slasher Video. And this one's still wrapped because I haven't watched it yet. And I usually don't unwrap my movies until I watch them. So I know nothing about this movie other than uh, Tracy Lords is in it. And I think it's another slasher. So I wanted to grab it. And this was another case of these two movies here were recommended to me by Amazon. So otherwise I probably would have never even thought about grabbing these. But it was recommended to me and the price was right. So I just added them to the cart and the rest is history. So these next five titles are from Vinegar Syndrome and they all came with slipcovers. I think, I think these three right here were the April... Um, uh, April package or bundle, whatever you want to call it. And then these two at the end, well, we'll talk about those when I get to them. But I have not watched these yet, so I can't really speak about them. But they look really cool, and these slipcovers are amazing. You guys know that. I'm usually more into the horror and cult stuff, and I think this is more of an action movie. But I'm looking forward to checking it out. 70s action to me was a lot better than 80s and 90s action movies. And I think this movie took place in New York City in the 70s, so that's always fun for me to watch. I like that kind of stuff. That's the reversible cover right there. Filthy rich landlords get away with murder. It's time they pay for it. So yeah, I'm going to keep moving on. This is a movie from 1977. It is all region. I think this, this video is already kind of long. Here is Last Gasp. Again, I don't know anything about this. I haven't watched it yet. Pray You Never Hear Your Last Gasp, I guess is what they're saying. It's a movie from 1995, 92 minutes running time, and this is region A only. Robert Patrick. Oh, okay, Robert Patrick from, well, he's from a lot of things. He was from, uh, my favorite Robert Patrick movie was Fire in the Sky, which was supposed to be a, a true story about UFO abductions, but he was also in X-Files. He was great. He's always, he's always fun to watch in the movies he plays in. So I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Next one is called Rush Week. Yeah, I think this is kind of a... It has Greg Allman in here. That's pretty cool. Film from 1989, Region A. I'm um, not really sure what this is. I thought this was kind of like a, um, is this a haunted house type movie? Kind of like a sorority house massacre type movie. I'm not sure. 
if anybody knows and if you want to comment without any spoilers you can always do that down below and then these two here are running low on slip covers and I think this one has been around for a long time and this was price reduced on their website I think they're just trying to get rid of it now this is called old Dracula and I think this is a horror comedy which is more heavy on comedy than anything else it's a movie from 1974 this one's region a and this came out in uh, 2020 when vinegar syndrome released it usually these slip covers don't last that long but like I said I think this was kind of one of their poor sellers and I think they're just trying to get rid of it they knocked it down a couple bucks and then this one was one that I never owned before it's called Malibu High and they released this one early on in their catalog without a slipcover and then they re-released or they released the slipcover last uh, last holiday season for Black Friday I think and they're getting really low now on the slipcover so I went ahead and grabbed it and this one sounded pretty cool so I wanted to pick it up and Tanner Ross uh, suggested this one to me so I grabbed it he's never steered me wrong before it's a movie from 1978 they're calling it a seedy sleazy little gem fast-paced blend of neo-noir plotting and sexploitation antics I think it's a revenge movie from what I remember Tanner telling me about I think this young girl here she drops out of school becomes a prostitute and her pimp is rough on her beats her up or whatever and then she comes back later and she kind of uh, she kind of has a revenge and she kills people I think I'm not sure exactly but those are my five vinegar syndrome titles I'm gonna pause it put them back in these slip covers and we'll move on I guess I'll show you my action figure pickups now and we'll do a quick comparison video because I do like what Mego is doing and that's exactly what this is right here in front of you this is the Candyman farewell to the flesh figure and you guys may remember in my last update video I showed you my NECA figure for Candyman farewell to the flesh and I'm gonna pull that out and we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison because NECA blows this away but this is still a cool figure and it's a lot cheaper uh, I call Migos NECA light they're kind of like the light version of a regular NECA and they're much more affordable they're like half price so I guess you get what you pay for right you get more better quality when you're double when you're paying twice the amount so and actually I have two of these so I'll probably end up giving one of these away in a contest but there's the NECA I, sh I showed this last time so I'm not going to show too much but you get really some really cool stuff you get that torn out chest you get the mouth with the bees in it that sculpt looks a lot like Tony Todd I mean that looks a lot like Tony Todd and then you come down to this one and it's just like uh, kind of a generic face it could be any you know it could be Denzel Washington you know but so you stick these guys side by side and of course NECA NECA takes that crown but they're both cool I'm glad I have both of them so I'll put that off to the side I didn't want to spend too much time on that I picked up the retro Skeletor at Target the other day it's not quite as cool as the original but I like it I wanted to grab it Skeletor from Masters of the Universe I had a lot of these when I was a kid I don't have any anymore I had quite a nice collection and about I think about like 10 or 15 years ago I had them for that long till about 10 or 15 years ago I sold the, the whole lot of them for like 200 bucks which I probably could have got way more than that but that's Skeletor and then I picked up it chapter 2 at Target since I just watched the movie recently and I really loved it this is the NECA uh, I think this is spectacular man look at that you get different head sculpts and this is not gonna turn out good because it's kind of washed out it's definitely not it looks way better in person but you have that uh, that red balloon what a beautiful figure excellent movie 
I would definitely watch both of these movies again and again and again. That's how good they were. So that, those are the figures. I'm going to pause it really quick. I have two vinyl records to show you guys, and then I have a little stack of Disney stuff, and then we'll wrap the video up. So I picked up a vinyl LP at uh, FYE last week when I got the uh, COVID shot. I stopped over at the FYE afterward and I picked this up. Um, that is the FYE exclusive Canary Yellow limited to 1000 has four bonus tracks. It was only $24.99 which I think I got it for $22 because I have the uh, membership card and it always knocks off two or three bucks. But I have not opened this yet but I definitely have very fond memories of this movie. I can recite this entire movie by heart and I know all of the music in here. So it's gonna be cool to go through and re-listen to this. I do have the 4K Goonies, which I watched recently over the past six months or so, which really brought back a lot of good memories. So I'm glad to have this in the collection. And then Waxworks sent this to me and I have it already. This is Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. This is now out of print already, it's sold out. Um, this is still sealed. I have this already. I'll probably end up giving this away in a contest or selling it or trading it. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, this is going for like between 60 and 80 bucks on eBay right now. So uh, it's two LPs. You guys may remember I unboxed this on my channel about a month or so ago. You get two LPs, 180 gram colored vinyl die cut centerfold. So it looks like Jason's mask is breaking through the portal or whatever you call those things. And this is a big seller because this is the first time this was ever released on vinyl. So a lot of people are going crazy over this. So that is the, those are the two vinyl I picked up. I'll briefly go through the Disney pile I got really quick. Uh, Disney was having a 20% off sale on their website. And since I'm a Disney Movie Club member, they send me emails every time they have a, a big sale. So uh, I partook, I got some pretty good titles here, I think, in my opinion, but they also sent a little pin. If you ordered anything during the sale, you got a little pin, which I'm not a pin collector, but for free, I'll take it. And this is Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, and it's uh, Manny, the uh, character that's voiced by Ray Romano. So that's really cool. If I could pick any character from the show to have on a pin, it would be Manny. So these were these first two were movies I got because I forgot to decline them. So I really didn't want these. These are just movies that they sent to me and I kept them. Neither one came with a slipcover, which was disappointing. Um, looking forward to checking out Epic. I'm not really the biggest Peanuts fan, to be honest with you, but I'll probably check it out at some point. But this is the Blu-ray DVD digital copy of the Peanuts movie. This is uh, Epic, and neither one of these are technically Disney titles. They are both, uh, what are they, uh, 20th Century Fox movies. They don't have the Disney brand or the Disney label on them, but they are owned by Disney. So Disney sells them on their website. I upgraded Brother Bear and Brother Bear 2. I do have this on DVD. This is a three disc special edition. I got this really, really cheap on the website. It includes the Blu-ray and DVD. It's a thick set, heavy set. Uh, I think I paid eight bucks for this, for the Blu-ray, brand new. This one was never released with a slipcover, at least that I'm aware of. I know the DVD was, I have the DVD of the twin pack and it came with the blue, kind of a foil slipcover. I don't know if the Blu-ray ever did. If anybody knows, you can let me know. Now this stack here, I'm pretty proud of. I was always planning to get these anyway because these are Disney Movie Club exclusives. You can only get these on the Disney Movie Club website by being a member. And this is the two movie collection of The Fox and the Hound and The Fox and the Hound 2. You can see the little Disney Diamond, Disney Movie Club exclusive. These all came with slip covers, so I was very happy about that. And these were all very cheap because they were 20% off. And these were the only ones I was missing. Now I have all of the exclusives on Blu-ray anyway. This was Pixar, Disney Pixar Cars Club exclusive, Blu-ray combo pack. 
This was one of the earlier Disney exclusives because now they have the that little white diamond. And I wanted to grab these now before the slipcover sells out because once the slipcover is gone, I mean, they're still collectible. It still has a diamond on the Amory case, but they're so much more collectible to me when you have the slipcover. And that's, I was pretty surprised when, I thought this would come without the slipcover because this one's been around for a while. And then this one doesn't have it labeled on the disc. I mean, on the uh, case, you only get a sticker on the slipcover. So I was glad that, I was really happy to see that that one came with a slipcover. And then you get Home Alone and Home Alone 2, movie club exclusive. This was kind of their second wave of exclusives because the first one had stickers. Second one had that box. And now the newest ones have that diamond. So get the Home Alone movies. This is another very heavy set. And the next one is called the Aristocats. And this is a newer one, it has a diamond. And the last one is Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure, Disney Club exclusive. I will do a quick, quick recap and then we will end the video. Okay, so we have all this stuff spread out on the bed. And these are in no particular order, just doing a quick recap. And if you guys want to comment about any of these movies, please feel free to do so. Camp Murder, Castle Freak, the remake, Epic and the Peanuts movie, The Aristocats, Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure, Exorcist 2, The Heretic, Nightmare on Elm Street remake, Batman Ninja, Shock'em Dead and Victims from Olive, Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Disney Car, Disney Pixar's Cars, Brother Bear, Brother Bear 2, Fox and the Hound, and Fox and the Hound 2, Wrong Turn, It Chapter 2, there's the enamel pin of Manny, the Majorettes, Last Gasp, Rush Week, Malibu High, Death Promise, Old Dracula, we have Candyman, Farewell to the Flesh from Mego, Skeletor from Masters of the Universe, Pennywise from It Chapter 2, these two movies are the same, Panic from Code Red, these two are the same, just different titles. The Slasher is the Sex Maniac and So Sweet, So Dead from Code Red. Warner Brothers Archive Collection, Hanna-Barbera's Thundar the Barbarian, the complete series on Blu-ray. Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. If you guys want to do a trade, let me know. And The Goonies, FYE exclusive, limited to 1,000 canary yellow wax. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For Miss Hannah and Miss Heidi, we thank you for sharing a little bit of your time with us. Take care, and I will see you in the next video. Later.